Welcome to the Suffolk Regiment Living History Society presents the Platoon Attack. Uh, this is taken from the 1944 Manual Infantry Training Part 8 Fieldcraft, Battle Drill Section and Platoon Tactics. A um, few notes on uh, the Platoon Attack before we get uh, started. Um, in many ways it represents an upscaled version of the Section Attack. Uh, we've done a video on that already so I'll put a link uh, at the top so that you can uh, go and access that if you haven't already seen it. Thoroughly recommend watching both that and the video on Platoon Composition before um, watching this one, they'll really give you some, some context, a little bit more understanding as to what's going on. Another thing to note is that you, uh, a platoon is normally somewhere between 30 and 40 men, um, normally around halfway between those. Um, so clearly quite a large organisation. Um, the way that we normally operate and are able to put this on in the field is when we operate as part of 3rd Infantry Division Association with the Royal Warwickshire Regiment and East Yorkshire uh, Regiment. Um, so three units coming together and we can normally put a, a fairly large and sizable um, contingent in the field and that allows us to actually um, conduct the platoon attack. Um, so without further ado, uh, we'll move on um, to the video itself. So here we've got the legend, um, got the various um, positions in the platoon denoted. Um, you'll need to um, refer to this like it's very likely we need to refer to this throughout the presentation just to understand exactly what's going on and who's where and who's doing what um, particular things to note um, differences of formation at the bottom so you've got section narrow head section file and the section in line um, that will become clear a bit later okay so here we have a field um, a few notes on the field before we talk about the platoon that's just moved on from the bottom left so we've got the a number of contours on here as you can see we've got a slope rising from the top of the screen up to around 150 uh, feet mark at the bottom. Um, there's a small copse of trees off to the right and you've got some patchy scrub woodland off to the top of the screen as well. So that slope um, potentially shielding a view from uh, below uh, to those on the top. Then bottom left you've got a, a little hillock of uh, 200 foot so overlooking most of the position that we can see there. Okay, so our platoon's moved on from the bottom left, one section up, two sections back with the O group and the platoon headquarters behind. I'll explain the composition of those in a second. So one section is leading and two and three section following up. And that arrowhead formation, each section individually in arrowhead, but that arrowhead formation allowing them to quickly respond to a threat from any direction. So platoon is divided as mentioned. So you've got uh, obviously the sections themselves and then you've got all the uh, command elements and, and the platoon weapons, etc. So you've got the O group, which has the platoon commander, uh, two and three section commanders, but not one section. Uh, platoon runner, the NCO commanding the two inch mortar. Um, sometimes the uh, 38 uh, set operator, normally that's the same person as the commander's Batman. Uh, runner from number one section, and the reason that you've only got a runner from the number one section and not the NCO commanding number one section is because one section is the furthest forward. It's the most likely to engage the enemy, most likely to come into contact with the enemy. So it's important that their commander is with them to coordinate that response. Uh, the idea is that one section have their um, runner embedded with the O group so that he can quickly run forward and update the commander of one section uh, should there be contact. In uh, Platoon HQ, you normally would have the Platoon Sergeant, the Mortarmen. Obviously, the Piat isn't mentioned in the PAM, but quite likely the Piat would remain with them as well. And then possibly the 38 set would be there, if not with the Platoon Commander. Okay, so the Platoon continue to advance. Um, upon reaching the top of that hill, they're seen and observed by the enemy. One section fired upon, uh, and they carry out their immediate drills. As mentioned, see the attack, uh, section attack video, uh, thoroughly recommended for... Uh, further understanding. So the section commander appraises the situation, decides what exactly he's going to do to overcome that enemy. Can he overcome that enemy? What strength are they in? And he'll start returning fire, coordinating that response. He'll send a runner back to the platoon um, to update the platoon commander on exactly what is happening, what he's done about it. Can he overcome um, the enemy? Can he carry on to his objective? In this situation, the enemy is in too much strength. He cannot um, complete his mission, which is to continue his advance on his own. So he's going to need support from the rest of the platoon. So the orders group, the uh, platoon commander will tell the section one runner that they are now fire section and that the platoon will be left flanking. The O group runner, so a man who's um, embedded as part of the platoon headquarters, he's told to run back to the platoon sergeant just behind them and tell the platoon sergeant they're left flanking. There's some follow on actions from that. So the platoon sergeant will speak to his, uh, to the two ICs of two and three section 
remember that their section commanders are with the O group and he'll tell them to get ready for left flanking um, the two section in the lead. So they've now moved their sections as you can see there with the Bren gun round to the left of the formation ready to start the left flanking maneuver. And two sections leading with riflemen with the Bren in the rear. The reason for that is there in the front putting the Bren at the rear enables them to have a little bit more tactical flexibility. Three section however leading with the Bren gun and then the riflemen behind them further behind less likely to be contacted um, and the Bren can then be deployed in support of two section as required should they encounter another enemy in their advance. So platoon sergeant and two ICs moved them out there and this is all happening as con uh, concurrent with the O group uh, with the orders group that's going on at the moment. The idea is they're in position so once the orders have fallen out there's no delay moving men into their start positions um, once the section commanders rejoin them. Okay so the commanding officer the officer commanding has ordered uh, enemy 400 yards we will destroy left flanking one section is a far section as already mentioned two section leading mortar with me then he'll explain signals it might be very lights it might be whistle signals it could be um, pre-designated or predetermined mortar strikes etc a number of options it also go through any supporting arms say for example company um, sorry battalion mortars three inch mortars back with support company they might be um, given to them they might have supporting armor etc etc so go through all those things explain where he's going to be and then most importantly at the end questions so the platoon commander joins two section and the platoon sergeant will remain with platoon HQ or three section. So line of advance, you have two section forward. Behind them, you'll have the uh, platoon commander with his Batman slash radio operator and his runner. Then you'll have the mortars, then three section and then the platoon sergeant bringing up the rear. So as you can see, they've moved round to the left. And the reason that the platoon commander has chosen this advance is because he's got that slope to shield him from the enemy advance so the enemy not particularly well situated they can't see down the slope from where they are they're too far onto the plateau and they can't see um, a platoon advancing through that defile on the left hand side he's also got some scrub and some hedgerows trees bushes etc to shield him in the meantime one section up on their hill continuing to pin down the enemy distracting them keeping their attention fixed on their position so the platoon commander as he moves he sights his uh, two section bren much like uh, in a section attack to provide fire onto the enemy whilst the assault goes in so they've now moved off further to the right and three section move off to the top of the screen and they're there really to guard against a flank attack because you've got that open exposed flank on the left of our platoon they can if needed be pulled back in turned around to fire onto the enemy but their primary purpose is to protect that unguarded left flank the mortar as well you'll notice has fallen out from the assault sections and is sat just behind them ready to provide uh, fire as required. So, platoon commander orders we will assault from here, fix your bayonets, mortar to fire HE or smoke there. So, HE um, from a two inch mortar is quite a small round. In the period, it was very, it wasn't very uncommon, but it was um, usually preferable to fire smoke from the two inch mortar due to the small, small um, explosive charge that was carried. It was more effective to use it for smoke as opposed to HE. Um, Due to the two inch size it just the effect um, was far less and it was far less um, had far less utility than the smoke that could be deployed from it uh, and then the two ic two and three section will prepare their men to um, fire rapidly uh, whilst the assault goes in so there's a smoke as you can see it's been placed um, to shield the assaulting sections from the enemy until the last minute placement of smoke is really critical um, you didn't want to silhouette your men against it so you want it to be close enough to the enemy that they can run through it but not so close that it's on them and they can see out of it um, also worth noting that timing is critical there's no point popping the smoke and then waiting for five minutes um, the enemy will know exactly where you're coming from so you want to follow it up as soon as it's an effective smoke screen so prepare to assault assault men get up and start running rapidly towards the enemy position um, the section two ic's with the brain guns will order rapid fire um, as the assaulting sections go in they'll be firing from the hip one section will be continuing suppressing fire under the orders of section commander but getting ready to stop firing as soon as they see the assaulting sections closing with the enemy obviously you've got the risk of blue and blue friendly fire there same thing goes for the brain guns in support as soon as they see um, the section commander sorry section 2 ic sees that the assaulting troops are moving across his front he'll stop them firing and he'll get ready to either um, contact any, any enemy approaching from the right of the screen reinforcements or indeed people running away 
and he'll also be looking out to the flank to see if uh, there's any risk of um, being attacked from that direction. When they get close enough, charge, they go in and they neutralise the enemy. Once this happened, they'll order consolidation. So two and three section, who are the assault sections, will pass through the position. One section moves all the way up from the left of the screen to take its position. You can see they're formed an all-round defence in the direction of the threat axis. So obviously where they've come from, they know it's friendly because they've just come from there. But they don't know what's out to the right, to the, um, to the top of the screen and to the bottom of the screen, so northeast and south. They're not sure what's coming from those directions. So they form that arc to protect themselves. The mortar comes in, the O group and platoon HQ all come in, they reconsolidate. And then once that happens, they bring in the Bren teams from two and three section, they'll rejoin uh, uh, correct sections. Um, platoon sergeant rejoins platoon HQ, as mentioned. So section ICs arrive with the O groups, so they come back in reporting on the ammo states, casualties, uh, things like that. Might be that that, uh, again, affects the platoon commander's um, plans might be that he now falls into reserve another platoon pushes through him in this instance they've not used much ammunition they've not had any casualties so they're ready to push on so he gives his next orders the section commanders uh, return to their sections to update uh, what's going on and then come back to the o group and then they'll continue with their mission um, as instructed in this case to move off to the right of the screen okay hopefully that's been informative and useful um, lots of moving parts. It's something that um, a lot of people seem to misunderstand. Um, very similar in some aspects to modern um, platoon attack, but with quite a few differences that uh, those who are aware will be able to sort of highlight and probably identify. Uh, a couple of videos here as well. I'll put links to them in the description. We've got uh, section attack um, video. As mentioned, it's kind of an upscaled version of that. So the section attack video is quite useful for as a building block to understand what's going on in the platoon attack and then just below that we actually have the platoon attack training video that was released in the period um, I'll put a link up the top to um, that section attack video that we've already done and I'll also put some links in the description as mentioned to our fellow uh, 3rd Infantry Division Association groups uh, hopefully you've enjoyed the uh, video today if you would like to know more check out our website or find us on Facebook Instagram thank you very much